With this pandemic, we all had to adjust to distance learning. The transition happened between March, the, I'd say the 11th and the 12th, 2020. So from one day to the next day, we were told your class will not take place. And of course, we were not immediately prepared for an online session. We were confronted with a challenge because it wasn't an option to go into the classroom, so we had to teach online. So you need to rethink what you do in your teaching. What is the course really about? What are the objectives I seek to realize? And how can we realize them in a realistic fashion uh, with the constraints, but also with some of the opportunities we have in online teaching? In online education, you have to be very efficient in such a way that I think, well, maybe you're preparing your breakfast in the morning and listening to my videos at the same time. So it's something that gives you the freedom to choose when and how you want to get instructed. Rather than structuring courses around sessions, I've started structuring courses around cycles. So you build a number of learning activities uh, in a certain cycle. So a cycle take, takes a topic, uh, it can be any topic, and you think not just as about the online lecture, it will be part of it, but there will be more things to it. Uh, students will do some individual or some group activities online, uh, which is, you know, using the advantages that online education offers. My job is to get the roles sorted out, and another job I have to uh, do back back screen, as it were, behind the simulation. I have to write scenario, which will only be posted once the roles have written the profile for themselves. So their first job is to write their own profile. And we do this because then they'll start to identify even before we start the simulations. Of course, online education also has some drawbacks. The contact with each other, the atmosphere of the classrooms, walking together to the coffee machine and the informality of having a discussion, you know, relaxed in a different atmosphere. All that is not possible, but well, at least not in the same way. One course I was teaching uh, had students scattered from Colombia to Indonesia. So there's, I don't know, there's about a 10, 11, 12 hours difference. And then of course, everything in between. So for me, that's been an argument to actually reduce live sessions to a bare minimum. Students have their own commitments, they have families, they have jobs, they have other things. So, so I thought it was fairest to um, make live sessions a minimum requirement and, and conduct the teaching other ways. It, actually, it's quite a multi-tracked uh, educational process, I think, online. And, and I think we have trouble converting our ideas from like a lecture with recipients to much more of a kind of coming and going between the text and the students, between the ideas and the students, and kind of making it iterative, right? It's what by iterative, I'm not trying to be fancy. It's not just participatory. It's actually going backwards and forwards between knowledge and experience, knowledge and experience, knowledge and experience of the students. And they can bring up examples from real life, and they do. And they do, especially when they have room for small, small breakout chats. Thank you.